Stephen Boylan, Executive Director of the New Jersey Motion Picture Commission, and on behalf of our commissioners and staff, and uh, actually our Vice Chairman, David Smith, that is, is here with us today. Uh, I welcome you to this uh, celebration of a very remarkable man. Uh, we are co-sponsoring this event with the New Jersey Department of State and the City of Trenton, and I thank them uh, for helping to make this day possible. I'd also like to thank Ken Lipkowitz uh, for uh, that beautiful piano music you were uh, hearing. <laughs> Ken is a native of Trenton, a uh, retired physician, and now performs as a professional musician. Uh, interestingly, as a child, Ken took lessons from Eddie Hatrack, who was a longtime friend of Ernie Kovac, and actually played piano on his television show. Everybody has a connection to uh, <laughs> that as we go along. Uh, and a few more quick acknowledgments. A number of people worked diligently to make this day possible, and uh, they should be thanked. Uh, first, thanks to Secretary of State Deisha Wei and uh, the Department of State's Chief of Staff, Jay Boone, whose support has been valuable and essential. We wouldn't be here today without it. Uh, thanks to uh, my staff at the New Jersey Motion Picture and Television Commission. Uh, Liz Parchman has been working on this event for months uh, and has done yeoman work, yo woman work. Uh, 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 partly because she likes to take on a challenge, <laughs> partly because I dumped it in her lap. Uh, Charles Richard and Joe Mara are here today helping us as well. Thank you for that. And our associate director, David Schoner, is manning the uh, uh, phones back in Newark to keep the commission running, but he uh, was instrumental in uh, uh, publicizing the event on social media, and we appreciate that. Uh, lastly, thanks to Tom Gilmore of the Trenton Downtown Association. Tom, are you here? Or? No. Hopefully it's coming. Anyway, uh, he's uh, the first person, one of the first persons I approached with the idea of doing this celebration, and he's been uh, instrumental in making things happen as well. Uh, Tom's been the commissioner's uh, boots on the ground, commission's boots on the ground guy in Trenton. I'm not sure if that's because he volunteered or because we drafted him, but nevertheless, uh, uh, the, the result has been just the same. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the New Jersey Motion Picture and Television Commission, we are a state agency within the Business Action Center. It's one of the nation's, uh, one of the world's leading silent film companies, I would say. He performs his original scores on both piano and organ. Uh, theater organ, uh, for more than 35 years, Ben has created and performed live scores for several hundred uh, silent films. Ben is the resident accompanist at the Museum of Modern Art and at the Library of Congress's Packard Campus Theater. If you collect DVDs and Blu-rays of silent films, and I've probably got a Zeta of them myself, uh, you're dedicated, you're, or you're a dedicated viewer of TCM, then you probably uh, have heard his work. Uh, ben also created the first Ernie Kovacs web one, website, or one of the first Ernie Kovacs websites, which uh, so impressed Ernie's former wife, Amy Adams, that she reached out to Ben and they began a long time friendship. And this led to Ben's uh, working with Edie's son, Josh Mills, who is with us today. And uh, Ben eventually became the archivist for the Ernie Kovacs and Edie Adams collections, hence uh, his presence here today. I am pleased to introduce our master of ceremony. Thank you. Welcome Trentonians. I checked these Trentonians. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for coming to our program today to celebrate the life and work of Trenton's own Ernie Kovacs. Uh, there's so much of Trenton and uh, Ernie's upbringing and his time spent uh, personally and professionally in his work and his later work. Um, there are names of people and uh, towns here or nearby that wind up uh, in his work. Uh, uh, the name Arthur B. Kosnowski turns up in many, many sketches. Uh, and Bernie Kosnowski was the polka king of Trenton and had a radio show on WTTN. Uh, so uh, Kosnowski, it comes up over and over in all of our sketches. So there's so much of, of Trenton in, in, in Aaron Kovacs. We'll have a number of guests talking about his work and his life. Uh, and we'll have uh, about 25 minutes of clips that include uh, some excerpts from a 1980 film about Ernie's life and trend. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, uh, I want to get things uh, started off, and I would, I would like very much, uh, very pleased to introduce the New Jersey Secretary, Secretary of State, Jackie Sherway. Thank 
Hey, let's give Ben another round of applause. recognize and acknowledge because she's done so much for this great state. Senator Shirley Turner's in the house. Yes. So good morning. Now I am a mom of four and my husband and I, we take trips with our kids in the car and oftentimes we hear, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? So I say this because when I first got on board as the Secretary of State, one of the events that Steve Gorelick, and let's give him a round of applause, yes, was mentioning the centennial celebration here in Trenton of Ernie Kovacs. So I would oftentimes ask my Chief of Staff, Jay Boone, when is the event? When is the event? When is the event? And so finally we are here, yes, right? Okay. Now, I just want to give a brief welcome to all who have come today. And one of my great privileges as the New Jersey Secretary of State is overseeing New Jersey's Motion Pictures and Television Commission. And it is equally an honor to be here to celebrate a hometown hero a first-generation American and a true Renaissance man. Ernest Edward Kovacs shaped American television, media, and culture in profound ways. His story embodies the promise and creativity of this great state. Born here in Trenton to parents who had immigrated from Hungary in search of a better life, Ernie was inspired by his Trenton Central High School drama teacher to become an entertainer. And interestingly so, he grew up just miles away from the RCA labs of West Windsor, where technological innovation would make his future career possible with the invention of the first color television. Yes. It was here that Arnie launched his career, juggling multiple roles as an announcer for the radio station WTTM, an actor and director with the Trenton Players Guild, and a columnist with the Trentonian. This city and our great state believed in Arnie's potential. And his influence on our culture is a testament to the power of supporting young artists and prioritizing arts education. After all, his work in Trenton earned him three to get ready, the country's first regularly scheduled morning show, which inspired NBC to create the Today Show. Moreover, Ernie wasn't afraid to push boundaries or even be a little weird. His shows featured sketches, characters, pranks, and silliness, inspiring generations of comedians, late night talk show hosts, and other entertainers. And today, as we celebrate this important centennial, we are also witnessing a tremendous revival for the film and television industry here in Jersey. Thanks to the Garden State Film and Digital Media Jobs Act, we are home to major television productions, including NBC's The Enemy Within. So on behalf of the great people of New Jersey, I am proud to celebrate Ernie Kovacs Centennial, because of Ernie, no other state can claim that they are the first in entertainment, overall entertainment history. New Jersey owns it. So let's, that's right, New Jersey owns it. So let's continue his important legacy, enjoy the program, and thank you all. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Liz Parchment, and I would like to present 
a proclamation and a few other things to Josh Mills of the Ernie Kovacs estate and the son of Josh, if you would join me. by the mayor of Trenton, proclamation by the mayor, Ernie Kovacs Day, whereas Ernie Kovacs attended Trenton District Schools and graduated from Trenton High School, where he was influenced by his drama teacher to pursue acting and was offered different scholarships to attend acting and singing institutions, whereas after forming his own stock company, he received offers from directors agents and playwrights to be a part of their work, whereas Ernie Kovacs' professional career started on Trenton Radio as a DJ at WTTM, and he worked at various radio stations in Trenton, New York, and Philadelphia, and won the highly coveted H.P. Davis Award, whereas a highly celebrated Trentonian columnist and broadcasting pioneer he wrote mystery shows for radio and also created the acclaimed television show, The Ernie Kovacs Show. Whereas Ernie Kovacs was known for his quirky humor and visually experimental offbeat comedic style. And whereas Ernie Kovacs starred in numerous major motion pictures such as Operation Madball and Five Golden Hours and Bell, Book, and Cradle. Now, therefore, be it resolved as the mayor of the city of Trenton, New Jersey, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of the United States, that January 23rd is designated as Ernie Kovacs Day. by Senator Turner, Assemblywoman Reynolds Jackson, and Assemblyman Morelli, whereas the Senate and General Assembly of the state of New Jersey are pleased to salute the memory of Ernie Kovacs, a highly esteemed native son of the city of Trenton, Mercer County, upon the auspicious occasion of this 100th birthday, and whereas a distinguished graduate of Trenton Central High School and the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, Ernie Kovacs enjoyed a superb career as a groundbreaking television star whose quirky humor and experimental comedic style entertained families across the country and inspired generations of broadcasters. And whereas Ernie Kovacs left an indelible mark on his home city as a radio disc jockey and newspaper columnist before joining WP television in Philadelphia, where he hosted several programs, including Free to Get Ready, the first regularly scheduled early morning show in a major television market, and whereas during the golden age of television, he hosted the acclaimed Ernie Kovacs show, which aired on four different networks and featured such innovations as video effects, superimpositions, blackouts, and interactions with the crew, and whereas Ernie Kovacs is especially remembered for playing such legendary characters as Eugene, Mr. Question Man, and Auntie Russo, and he also starred in such films as Operation Madball and Wake Me When It's Over, and wrote the book Zumar, a sophisticated novel about love and TV, and whereas an array of honors and awards bears witness to the exceptional accomplishments of Ernie Kovacs, including the Emmy Award, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, an induction into the Academy of Television, Arts, and Science Hall of Fame, and he was also the subject of a retrospective exhibit at the Museum of Broadcasting. And whereas although his life was cut short at the young age of 42, after he died in a car accident, Ernie Kovacs will always be remembered for setting a standard of excellence, 
that remains a model worthy, worthy of emulation. And whereas Ernie Kovacs' life and legacy will be honored during a celebration of his centennial birthday, which will be presented by the New Jersey Department of State, the New Jersey Motion Picture and Television Commission, the City of Trenton, and the Ernie Kovacs Estate on May 22nd, 2019 at the New Jersey State Museum Auditorium. Auditorium. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and General <laughs> Assembly of the State of New Jersey that this legislature hereby recognizes the memory of Ernie Kovacs and pays tribute to his extraordinary career in entertainment and his meritorious record of service leadership and commitment, and be it further resolved that a duly authenticated copy of this resolution be signed by the Senate President and the Assembly Speaker and attested by the Senate Secretary and the Assembly Clerk, Stephen M. Sweeney, Sweeney President of the Senate, Craig J. Coughlin, Speaker of the General Assembly. Centennial Tribute. Born in 1919, Kovacs grew up in the south side of Trenton, where he developed an early interest in performing. He was so naturally gifted that he received a scholarship to attend the John Drew Memorial Theater in East Hampton, Long Island, for a summer, as well as the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York. His professional career took off shortly after, where he worked his way up from a staff member to director of special events at WWTM in Trenton over nine years. Before 1950 and his death in 1962, Ernie was extremely successful in the television industry. He built a name for himself using visual experiments and a spontaneous offbeat comedic style that influenced countless future programs. Unfortunately, his talent was not truly appreciated or recognized until after his fatal accident. And today, Ernie Kovacs is known as TV's first significant video artist. As governor of this home state, I commend all those who continue to celebrate Kovacs' life and legacy. Best wishes for an enjoyable and successful event. My very best, Philip D. Murphy, Governor. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm set up like I'm going to bring a sketch. But I want to do, before I bring up our, our next special guest, just a, a quick shout out for, for those of us who discovered Ernie Kovacs in 1977 on public television. Um, that threw a a television series called The Best of Ernie Kovacs was uh, conceived and produced by a guy named John Lowell. Is that you, John? Just a quick shout out John. Thank you, thank you so much. And so, there's so many people who know Kovacs uh, just because of that series. Um, now I'd like to bring up uh, a, special, a special guest, Joel Hodgson, uh, who many of you uh, He's probably best known for Mystery Science Theater 3000, but had started out doing stand-up, uh, usual uh, an off stand-up uh, in the 1980s, became a, a regular performer uh, on the Letterman Show and Saturday Night Live, but in 1988 created Mystery Science Theater 3000, a Minneapolis television station on a production scale rather akin to what Kovacs was doing in Philadelphia on a similar budget in, in, in some cases. Um, this, the show ran for several years, uh, but I think, uh, as, as Joel has mentioned to me before we started, the, the key event was his meeting Edie Adams uh, and getting to know her. And she was a huge fan of the show um, and really just really liked exactly you know, the kind of stuff that he was doing. Um, the, the Mystery Science Theater 3000 is still. Uh, around, uh, thanks to a, an excruciatingly successful Kickstarter, uh, millions of dollars worth of in the show has been rebooted and it's back on, on Netflix uh, for everyone to enjoy and to see. And to talk a, a little bit about Ernie Kovacs and his own influence on him, here's 
Joe Haas. Ben. Thank you, Ben. There's Ben. Ben Modell. He knows so much more than I do about Kovacs, believe me. Um, what I did want to do, though, is we have an authority in the room that I wanted to meet. And uh, we have somebody here named Louise who knew Ernie Kovacs. Yeah. Louise Gould, right? Here, let me sit next to you. Now, Louise knew Ernie, and she's the best person here to tell us what Ernie was like. And can I tell them how old you are? Is that okay? Oh, you want... 99. Okay, so tell us about Ernie. Well, I graduated high school with him. Uh, he and I were in the same class that that. It says 1936. Yeah. We went on a, I was in the group with him on the Washington trip, and he was a fine, fine man, young man, and the funniest person you ever met in life. So you went on a class trip with Ernie, right? You said there were like six of you, is that right? At the home together. Oh, right. So he must have been just a huge ham. Well, he bought what he called Zap Gun. <laughs> and he zapped everything in Washington. But, but wait, was, wait, wait, what's a zap gun? Is it, is it, it actually? It just zapped. It's, it oh. made a sound. Oh, good. Because uh, that's frowned on in Washington now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to do that. But he was a, a fine, wonderful man, and I enjoyed every minute that I ever was with him. Well, that's lovely. Thanks so much for sharing, Louise. That's wonderful. Let's give a round of applause for Louise. I couldn't say it better myself. Quite possible. One of the fun things in going through the two seasons of Take a Good Look that survived uh, was discovering how many of the clues. See, the, the format of the show was to be a secret guest, and the panelists were invariably Hans Conley, Edie Adams, and Cesar Romero. And they'd be shown a clue, a video clue as to the identity of, of the secret guest. But as, as Joel mentioned, the, the clue was so buried within this blackout sketch, there was no way you'd ever be able to figure it out. And Ernie almost seems like he's having fun putting one over on the panelists, like, they're never going to get it. Um, and finding, uh, in going through a lot of the Take a Good Look shows, finding uh, clues that, oh, well, oh, that whole sequence with the uh, Miklos Molnar teaching how to make chicken Molnar was actually from a guest who was a chef at the White House. Oh, so uh, there's plenty of clues that did not get repurposed at the ABC specials. And something else could be made out of them. Um, uh, in case you're wondering about my tie, uh, are there any any, any hard guy members of the EFMS? So, okay, a couple of you. The EEFMS was a, like a secret club. If you watch any show, it was called the Early Eyeball Fraternal Marching Society. <laughs> <laughs> and you would send in for a membership, and he would you would Ernie and he would sign the card and send it to you uh, because the show was so early and Ernie you know kept crazy hours. Um, uh, so there are a couple of ties like this I've seen, so I just, that's why I have, I have this. We're going to see uh, Kovacs now, uh, about 25 minutes uh, that I've put together um, of, of Kovacs uh, material as well as we're going to start our section off with um, a document we made in 1980 by Calvin Nizark. Uh, it was initially intended as part of a multi-episode uh, documentary series, but only one got made in. Running, money ran out. Uh, there is uh, a 16 millimeter print of it in our collection, which uh, the, the, the films and tapes were acquired in 2014 by the Library of Congress, where they're now being preserved and taken care of. And what we'll be seeing is seven minutes of excerpts from that half hour show, and a brand new two case scan done by the Library of Congress video lab, so that's your tax dollars to work. Uh, you'll see some uh, some uh, people from Trenton uh, uh, talking about Ernie at, at, at the time, and then we'll see uh, some segments from Ernie Kovacs television shows 
uh, a, a moment from a show he did in 1951 in Philadelphia, a couple of things he did for NBC in 1956, uh, a commercial that he did for Dutch Master Cigar that won uh, uh, an award the first year the Cleos were given out, as well as uh, some of the oscilloscope blackouts in one of his infamous musical sketches to a piece by Eskimo. Um, so without further ado, here's, here's Bernie. Taste is food in the world. And that's how he 
came to Chick and Memo, commonly known as the Homestead Inn. I'm not alone. And Ernie Kovacs used to come here and leave here. And he loved his food, and he loved his cigar. And he had the kitchen. Ernie liked job in Trenton that got him one step closer to that big TV station in Philadelphia was WTTM Radio in Trenton. There he met Mr. Radio, Tom Durant. <laughs> in the Bobcats and South Rambart Street Parade. Love that Dixieland, love that Dixieland. You know, at this particular point, if Ernie were still with us, and I hesitate to say that because he'll always be with us, but if he was still working in this medium, he'd probably do one of these fake commercials about Brodsky's. Now, Brodsky's were Ernie's favorite topic and favorite commercial. But they weren't real. He'd advertise polka dot Brodsky's for an informal affair. He'd advertise uh, fur-lined Brodsky's for a severe winter night. Uh, he'd also do uh, red, white, and blue Brodsky's for uh, patriotic occasions. And they came in three sizes. Oh boy, gee whiz, and wow. Now most people listening to Ernie doing a commercial like that were not aware of the fact that the whole thing was a put on. However, the inner circle, the people who were really hip, knew that Brodsky's were a piece of ladies apparel, a brassiere. But probably uh, the greatest stunt he ever pulled was the week-long marathon he conducted at the New Jersey State Fair, probably around 1949, somewhere in there. And at that time, he set a record, which I understand was in the Guinness Book of Records or wherever they keep records of that type, but at the time, it was a record. He stayed up and broadcast an entire week long at the New Jersey State Fair. He would have these chefs from area restaurants come out and cook him a meal in his little tent apartment. And uh, he interviewed them, of course, uh, on the program and asked them about their recipes and so forth and so on. And again, he cooked this whole thing up uh, out of a need for uh, money and finances and so forth. He was, he was always broke and always needed more money. In walking into Ernie's home to return this camera, I saw this television set over the corner and I remarked about it. And Ernie said, yeah, yeah we got on the such and such a deal and put it in here for 30 days. And he said, you know, Tom, he said, this, this is the medium I've got to get into. And so he did shortly afterward at WPTC in Philadelphia, where I met him. <laughs> Oh, oh. 
have to come out and make it to have a line. And the military is beheaded. And higher falsehood, there's no such thing as a as lie. Don't let it confuse this is not a lie in your You think it's a lie. And it's nothing you said, uh, what you're looking at. I think it's made by a bronze place, actually. So you probably get this effect on the picture, but you wouldn't get thermal. And he'll let's try it this way, shall we? What else? But we run out of things. Those little seeds on rye bread, 
If the shopkeeper drink coffee and a t-shirt, do they use real iodine on the minutes? Does the DC-7 eat its young? And in a fair fight, could Rocky Marciano be Charles Coburn? <laughs>
Um, we're going to have a, a panel discussion, a Q&A now. Uh, with, we'll bring uh, Joel and uh, Joel Hodgson and Josh Mills up on the stage, as well as Jeff Edelstein. Jeff Edelstein, a uh, longtime columnist for the Trentonian, fill-in talk show host on NJ 101.5, and a long, lifelong New Jersey. He's an adjunct professor of journalism at Ryder University. Won't you uh, welcome Jeff Edelstein, Joel Hodgson, and Josh Mills. <laughs> he says, I am, this is for Josh, I'm kidding, I don't have any. <laughs> so I guess, I'm, am I saying something here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can share Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, first of all, John, for letting me uh, hang out here. I, I appreciate it. Um, I found out about Ernie Cole. I, I, I was vaguely aware of Ernie Cole. I didn't really know I didn't know he was a trend. I grew up in North Jersey. Uh, so I got the job down in Trentonian in 99. And uh, it was the, the uh, you know, obviously the turn of the century. We were doing this great uh, uh, series of articles, uh, the biggest trend story of the year, each year from 1900, you know, onward. And uh, I believe it was the 1951 we chose for Ernie Kovacs. And I read all about uh, his career, you know, the story that we did there. And, uh, and I realized, man, like, wow. I want to be Ernie Kovacs, uh, really, and I know because like so I was hard as a reporter, and uh, I wanted to be a columnist. I mean that's what I really wanted to do, and and here I am saying that Ernie was a columnist at Trentonian from 1945 to 1950. I'm like man, I, I got to do this. You know, another thing I remember from that story was that uh, he would sometimes come to work in his bathroom, uh, and I honest to God tried that once. Like, <laughs> after I became a columnist, my publisher sent me home. Uh, so, but I wanted to be, I, want, I said, I said, I want to be like Ernie Kovacs. And, you know, so I, I got the job as a columnist after a few years, and I was like, man, I'm on my way. Then I got, like, I got into some radio stuff, you know, for New Jersey 101.5. I'm like, man, like, just like Ernie. Then I got some TV work, you know, just like Ernie. And then he went to Hollywood and found fame and fortune. And, uh, you know, I'm here to talk to you folks tonight. <laughs> but, uh, uh, obviously, I'm kidding. To compare myself to Ernie Kovacs, I might as well compare myself to Babe Ruth. Uh, it, that is it's so, it's so wildly different. He was, you know, I mean, everyone said the same thing today, so I'm just going to, like, you know, hit the highlight here. He was, you know, and they're all you know, cliches. He broke them all. He was a pioneer. He, he did all these things. And what you kind of forget is when you look back on history and you say, man, this guy was a pioneer, this guy was breaking the mold, you only remember the ones that were doing it correctly, right? You don't remember, you know, many people try new things and fall flat on their face. Right? Ernie tried new things that nobody else was doing. And you, you know, look at, you know, from, you know, Lappin to Saturday Night Live to Letterman to Leno to Conan O'Brien to Jimmy Fallon. Without Ernie Kovacs, I think it's safe to say that the landscape that we know today of, like, you know, comedy is at the very least much different. You know, Ernie was the one who created all these things, all these great ideas, and, you know, Brought it, to, brought it to the masses. So it's obviously it's a shame, obviously, to sit here today, that he wasn't around to enjoy it. Because when he was doing this stuff, he was the only one. Right? So, uh, anyway, Josh, thank you for letting me be here today. The part about it was there's a party, and there's a scene at a party, and she basically has to be herself. She said that was pretty surreal. Uh, but she loved Jeff Goldblum. I don't know if she loved the production so much because it was a very kind of down, uh, downer uh, subject. It was more about uh, the kids getting kidnapped, which really did happen. Um, but she said, you know, Ernie was a blast. I mean, everything about, you know, he'd wake up on a manic high. And he was very excited about the best coffee he was going to have and the best eggs and whatever. And she just said it was amazing uh, to work with him and live with him because every day was like a treat. So uh, it didn't come across, I don't think, in the uh, production. Nothing against Jeff Goldblum. I'm not, you know, disparaging or anything. But uh, it was, uh, she was a part of it. She, she was definitely a part of that production. Yeah. Yes. Uh, to the gentleman who wants to be Ernie Kovacs, yes. Yes. I don't know if you can give me a factual answer, maybe a opinion with it, or maybe Josh could know. In the picture of him that was up on the screen it, during the whole presentation earlier, yes. he has this mustache and a cigar. And to me, it looks like the mustache has been darkened with a dark pencil. Did Ernie Kovacs? Want to be Groucho Marx. <laughs> <laughs> it's where it's in, he wanted to be. I know. 
correct from life. Hey, I think, I, I, I'm really glad you noticed that. that. We think that's from Life Magazine. That's, 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 that's yeah. And the crazy thing about Kovacs is, especially when he was doing stuff with Bill Wendell, yeah. 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 look at those two faces, how the contrast that's built into Kovacs' face, it's almost like he was made for TV. Absolutely. He blew Bill Wendell, like Bill Wendell, was like just this average looking guy, nice looking guy, but you, you almost can't look at him at the same time because of what's going on with Kovacs and, and those pictures of him when he was little, when Louise was knew him, like he's got this big, amazing round face when he's a kid. And you just go, he's, you already are seeing him when he's a kid, he's like great looking and funny. And it, it translates it through his whole life. So he, he kind of, Carried that. I don't think he was trying to be. Uh, I don't think he was trying to be Groucho Marx, but but I think he understood the contrast of what that was doing on the picture plane. You know. I think that was a very significant moment that Life Magazine covered that he got because he essentially what happened was uh, Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin had just broken up, and NBC offered a 90 minute special to Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis said, "I'll do 60. I don't want to do 90 minutes." And they were ecstatic, but they could not find anyone to do the last 30 minutes. So they basically went to Kovacs and like, you know, the tenth resort and said, you know, do you want the last thirty minutes? He said, I'll do it, but I don't want any interference, so I'm gonna do whatever I want to do. And they said, Fine, that's great, we're gonna get the ratings anyway, we really just want Gary. Uh, and what happened was he did the same No, 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 it's just a basic variety yeah. show and it's it's uh, it shouldn't be on YouTube, but it is, and it's just it's just an hour of Jerry. Full full on Jerry. He, he sings, he does the crazy nine-year-old is, just, and by the end of the hour, you can see he's kind of spent, and I don't think he had the energy to do the whole ninety. And but he's just loud and in your face. And then Ernie comes out and very quietly and says, "There won't be any talk." And even the commercials don't have, have dialogue. And the ironic thing, of course, is the Life magazine cover was published on April fifteenth. Right. You're, you're, you're supposed to fire him. I don't think Ernie's filed his taxes that year. I'll, I'll tell you a pretty funny story that Henry Bollinger was both Ernie and my mom's publicist for, I mean, my mom's publicist for 40 plus years. He told me a story. So Ernie comes out to LA. It's uh, all of a sudden he's going to live in Los Angeles and uh, he's meeting all these PR people. And he meets this really big PR firm. They meet at the Polo Lounge at the Beverly Hills Hotel and they're 